Ah, the fabulous warlock. This warlock subclass has you make a pact with some horror in the deep. Welcome to Pack Tactics, Ia Ia Cthulhu Photogen. Yeah, fabulous! So Fathomless Warlock, while it has some features that have to do with water, this subclass is everything but situational. It's actually really, really strong for Warlock standards. Kobold, oh my god! Raid Shadow Legends! <laughs> <laughs> it didn't last long. Raid is a turn-based RPG, just like D&D. You can team up with other players to battle bosses, just like D&D. You can fight in global PvP matches, too. You can't do that in D&D. Build a team with over 600 champions and delve into dungeons and fight dragons. I decided to try the game and it gave me four class options. I'm a power gamer, so of course I look up who is the best champion. And it turns out it's the caster, just like D&D. AoE blasting is my favorite in-game feature. This is Raid's third year anniversary, so let's do a top three places to play Raid. Number one, while watching D&D videos, Raid is on PC. Number two, in bed, it's a mobile game too. Number three, behind the DM screen, your players can't look behind the DM screen. That's metagaming and cheating. There's also a Halloween update. New players, listen up, this is just for you. You can win a bunch of real life and in-game prizes including a thousand dollar Amazon gift card and some epic and legendary Halloween champions. Just download the link in the description and head to Trick or Treat Polarium and spin the wheel. You better hurry though, this event ends on the 5th of November. But there's more, I've optimized for you new guys. Use the link or scan the QR code and get a free starter pack worth almost 30 bucks. You'll find your rewards here in your inbox for the next 30 days only. Check out Raid Shadow Legends, it's free on the phone and PC. Use the link or code, check it out! Let's get into it. First up is their expanded spell list. The big thing to remember here is that they are not automatically prepared. They are just extra choices. You don't need to pick them, but on the other hand, they are not free. We have some good choices here. I'll go over them at their respective level. For now, we have access to Create or Destroy Water and Thunder Wave. The former is not very useful for the most part, but Thunder Wave fills a pretty good niche for blast spells before second level spells for Warlock. Additionally, you get two features at level one. Let's start with Gift of the Sea. You gain a swimming speed of 40 feet and you can breathe underwater. But Koopal, this is situational. Well, this is situational, but that doesn't mean the whole subclass is situational. Anyways, you know when this will be useful. You're not gonna forget about this feature. This also helps with melee attacks underwater if that comes up. Last thing, consider pulling a Sandy Cheeks from Spongebob if you don't want to breathe in the toxic fumes as well. Aye aye, Captain! And now for the big feature for Fathomless Warlocks, Tentacle of the Deeps. <laughs> I'm not gonna make any inappropriate tentacle jokes. You can magically summon a spectral tentacle that strikes at your foes. As a bonus action, you create a 10 foot long tentacle at a point you can see within 60 feet of you. The tentacle lasts for one minute or until you use this feature to create another tentacle. When you create the tentacle, you can make a melee spell attack against one creature within 10 feet of it. On a hit, the target takes 1d8 cold damage and its speed is reduced by 10 feet until the start of your next turn. When you reach 10th level in this class, the damage increases to 2d8. As a bonus action on your turn, you can move the tentacle up to 30 feet and repeat the attack. You can summon the tentacle a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus, and you regain all expended uses when you finish a long rest. This is so good with the right party. It is very similar to a bonus action Ray of Frost which is one of the best offensive cantrips in the game. But Kobold, it does worse damage than Firebolt! How could Ray of Frost be any good? It's because of the 10 foot slow. While damage is important, reducing the damage is what you're aiming for. You want to make sure the enemy does as little damage to you and your friends as you can possibly manage without using too many resources. That is why damage done per damage taken is such a good metric. 
if you can deal 50 damage, but also take 50 damage, that isn't as good as consistently being able to deal 10 damage and taking nothing. Ray of Frost and therefore also the Tentacle of the Deep are incredibly good because they keep enemies away from the party, which makes them less likely to have the ability to use their melee attacks. And usually their melee attacks are a lot stronger than their ranged attacks. Majority of them don't even have ranged attacks. I did say it kind of depends on the party because you might have a melee marshal in your party and he wants to dash up to the enemy. If this is the case, you might not get too much value out of this feature. Tentacle of the Deep is especially good on Warlocks because of Eldritch Blast. Warlocks are already really good at keeping enemies away from them using Eldritchifications like Repelling Blast, which pushes enemies 10 feet away with each beam that hits. Or Lance of Lethargy, which also slows down enemies by 10 feet. And those things all stack with the tentacle. Imagine slowing somebody down by 20 feet and pushing them back like, what, 30 feet, for example. But Kobold, that's overkill! Well, not really. We're just increasing the chances we'll actually succeed. And that's a good thing. Okay, now that I've talked about my favorite feature for this subclass, it's time to move on. From 5th level and onwards, we can pick up Lightning Bolt and Sleet Storm. Lightning Bolt is whatever, but Sleet Storm is fantastic. It follows the theme of keep enemies in place and mess them up before they can mess you up. This can change the entirety of how an encounter plays out, especially with the repertoire a Fathomless Warlock may have at this point. The combination of prone plus difficult terrain plus multiple pushbacks plus the slow of the tentacle makes the area a living hell, albeit a little bit colder. It's almost like living in Norway. Okay, next up is two more features at level six. First is Oceanic Soul. You are now even more at home in the depths. You gain resistance to cold damage. In addition, when you are fully submerged, any creature that is also fully submerged can understand your speech. And you can understand theirs. Blah, 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 blah. Cobalt! How could you say that about my mother? Gator, I was explaining the feature in Blub Blub. So resistance to cold damage is neat. Enemies do more elemental damage the further along you get in the campaign, so this is definitely welcome. Especially because you cannot rely on absorb elements in such situations. You can also talk to fish and befriend them. That's pretty optimal. At the same level, you also get Guardian Coil. Your tentacle of the deeps can defend you and others, interposing itself between them and harm. When you or a creature that you can see takes damage while within 10 feet of the tentacle, you can use your reaction to choose one of those creatures and reduce the damage to that creature by one. 1d8. When you reach 10th level in this class, the damage reduced by the tentacle increases to 2d8. A bit of anti-synergy here, as preferably you keep the tentacle with an enemy, away from your party. And this is not a reason to change that strategy. It may come up anyways though, at which point you likely don't have a better use for your reaction, even if it is not a lot of damage. If a marshal, for example, is in melee, you might as well use this to help him out. From 7th level and onwards, you can pick control water and summon elemental with the restriction of water elementals only. I don't like summon elemental at all. Control water is really strong if you play near water. Otherwise, you should probably focus on picking up Sickening Radiance and some other good third level spells. And for the final spells from the expanded spell list, at ninth level, you get access to Bigby's Hand and Cone of Cold. Synaptic Static is a lot better than Cone of Cold, but Bigby's Hand is a nice concentration spell to add to your options. At 10th level, this subclass gets Grasping Tentacles. Gator, don't go there. I can see you smiling. Anyways, you learn the spell Black Tentacles. It doesn't count as a Warlock spell for you, but it doesn't count against the number of spells you know. You can also cast it once without a spell slot, and you regain the ability to do so when you finish a long rest. Whenever you cast a spell, your patron's magic bolsters you, granting you a number of 
temporary hit points equal to your warlock level. Moreover, damage can't break your concentration on this spell. This is basically another secret expanded spell, but even better. You might say that this spell overlaps a lot with web, but that basically shows it's good as well. If someone puts down web, you could even combo with them if you wish. Good feature. Finally, there's Fathomless Plunge at 14th level. You can magically open temporary conduits to watery destinations. As an action, you can teleport yourself and up to five other willing creatures that you can see within 30 feet of you. Amid a whirl of tentacles, you all vanish and then reappear up to one mile away in a body of water you've seen. Pond size or larger, or within 30 feet of it. Each of you appearing in an unoccupied space within 30 feet of the others. Once you use this feature, you can't use it again until you finish a short or long rest. In truth, this might not come up very often. At around this level, you probably have other ways of fast transportation. So this subclass doesn't really end with a bang, but I really like some of the spells. And it gets really good features just from the start, and other nice ones later on too. End the video! Check out Raid Shadow Legends! Scan the QR code or link it in the description. Thanks again, Raid! I'm finally a real YouTuber now! Bye bye